Beautiful. Sorry. Okay. Fantastic. Welcome. Sorry. Okay. We're going to talk for the next wee while. I'm going to give you um, a really nice introduction to New Zealand, which is where I live. So I actually live in My Auckland, which is the so... biggest city. Um, it's about 1.7 million people, but it's the main port that you'll be flying into if you're coming through from the USA. Uh, now, this particular picture uh, is the beautiful backdrop of Milford Sound, which is a must-do. It's at the bottom of the South Island in the Fiordland National Park. And this bird that you see on the left is called a tui. And the tui is very distinctive because it's got these little white markers um, underneath the beak here. And it's uh, you see it up and down the country. So we have some really, really, light, really, really nice bird life here in New Zealand. We used to have the biggest bird in the world called the moa, which stood about 10 feet high. Um, and uh, unfortunately, they were hunted and eaten to extinction by the local Maori. But uh, you can actually see the moa bones in Auckland Museum. Uh, and it's like a prehistoric bird. It was a flightless bird, but it was absolutely massive. So if you think of like an ostrich and you think of something that's 1.5 to two times bigger than an ostrich, you get an idea. New Zealand was actually, New Zealand's a very interesting country because it was the last major landmass in the world to be settled by anyone. So the Maori got here about a thousand years ago. Before that, there was nobody here at all. And so the land, the landscape and the animals that were found here, there were no predators or anything. So there's a very prehistoric landscape. So uh, we'll, we'll get straight into it. This is me, uh, Chris. Uh, as I said, I'm based in Auckland, born and bred Kiwi. Uh, and I've been working with Abercrombie and Kent for about a year and a half now. I came back a year and a half ago to look after New Zealand. So I think one of the big things about New Zealand is uh, just exploring its wild open landscape. To give you guys an idea of how big the country is, we can pretty much fit into the size of California, okay? We've got 5 million people, so we don't have a big population, but within that uh, amount of land, you've got everything from beautiful alpine vistas, glaciers, volcanoes, uh, geothermal activity like bubbling mud, Near where I live up in the north, you have beautiful white sand beaches, subtropical rainforest, there's good diving. Um, and these are a couple of my favorite picks from when I first joined with A&K. The one on the left is uh, just outside of Queenstown in the South Island where I was doing a heli tour of the surrounding peaks and I got dropped off on this remote peak. And the one on the right is doing the boat cruise in beautiful Milford Sound. And the peak that you can see on the right is called Mitre Peak. It's absolutely stunning, whether you see it from the top by a helicopter or plane, or you go out on a cruise, as I'm also doing. I actually came in by plane and then did the cruise. But basically, it's 6,000 feet high, and it just drops straight into the ocean. These are all uh, glacial fjords, uh, and they're fantastic to see from above and also by a boat. So let's start talking about some of the beautiful places that you can stay in in New Zealand. As I said uh, a few minutes ago, we live in a really green country here. Uh, and particularly the west coast of the South Island, which has a lot of rain, is very green, and the North Island is very green as well. So you've got a couple of options in terms of the types of places that you can stay when you come to New Zealand. You can stay in some of the luxury lodges, and I'm going to go through a few of those next. But you can also do some private villa rentals. And so I've just put a selection here to give you an idea of the types of places you can stay at. If you wanted to be really remote and stay on a private farm, for example, and have your own place, whether it be a little two-bedroom place right through to five or even 10 bedrooms if you're planning a multi-generational family trip, we can arrange that. If you, want to live, if you want to stay in a private villa next to the ocean, if you want to stay up into the mountains, we can also arrange that. So there really is a ton of options here. Uh, and the beauty about New Zealand is that it is so accessible. The longest flight you can take in New Zealand is two hours. That's the longest plane trip you can do. And within two hours, you can go from Auckland where I live, which is a bustling metropolis, and then you can be right next to a glacier, for example, in a completely different world. So lots of really, really cool stuff to explore. One of my favorite remote private uh, places is called Farakia Chalet. Now this is just outside of a place called Wanaka. So Wanaka is about an hour's drive out of Queenstown, which you can fly into, uh, and then you take a private heli up. And as you can see from this, it's absolutely stunning. This is only accessible by helicopter. It sits at about 5,000 feet, only got two bedrooms, plus you have your mountain host that stays with you and cooks your meals. And when you're there, you have this whole alpine playground to yourself. There's no one else around there. And you can see uh, if you want remoteness, it's hard to beat. Going into one of the most popular and longest running luxury lodges we have, this is Hooker Lodge. This is in Taupo. So Lake Taupo is a beautiful volcanic lake in the center of the North Island. It's about a three and a half hour drive from Auckland. 
Um, and this luxury lodge has been in existence since about the 1920s. It started as a trout fishing lodge and it's right next to the Waikato River. And the beautiful thing about this property is that Lisa's has also stayed there. So tell us about staying there, Lisa, and your experiences with it and what you thought of the property. We can't hear you. Okay. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, when we first got there, we didn't, we had no idea what to expect, but it's all along the river and um, it's quite a fast river. So it's, you can see why fishing would be such a big deal. This is really famous for fishing, um, Hooker Lodge, but it is stunning. <laughs> it's um, the food and beverage is just unbelievable. So the thing about the luxury lodges in New Zealand is that you're paying, uh, you always have breakfast included, but you also have this most amazing several course um, gourmet dinner and all of these lodges provide that. So when you go there, you, you know, you're going to have three or four or five, six or seven courses, depending upon, you know, what they're offering. But um, it was one of the best meals we'd ever had. It was stunning. Your, your, well, this was just the beginning of, um, of so many of these. And I think that the perfect vacation would be to stay in a luxury lodge throughout your, throughout your trip. But I know that's not always possible. But anyway, it was amazing. Well, we're, we're gonna go through, I've got about four or five luxury lodges to go through, just to give you guys an idea of the different types of experiences and places and location. And it may be that as part of your trip, you just wanna choose one or two of these. But the beauty about the New Zealand luxury lodges is that they are all so unique. You can be right, or you can be on a cliff top overlooking the ocean. You can be remote in a private farm surrounded by snow-capped peaks. Uh, you can actually be downtown in Queenstown, which I'll get to soon, in a historic hotel that was built 150 years ago. So I'm going to go through uh, a few more to give you guys an idea. So this is Hapuku Lodge. And again, this is a place that Lisa stayed at. And this place is really cool because Hapuku Lodge is in Kaikoura. So Kaikoura is in the top of the South Island. And it is in such a unique location because you have got beautiful mountains that rise up to about 7,000 feet on one side. And then on the other side, you have the Pacific Ocean and you have whale watching and this incredible marine life that just is right in front of you. And this is the best place in New Zealand to see whale watching. You can go swimming with dolphins. There are seals there. It's fantastic to take a helicopter over. And the cool thing about this place is that it's literally a luxury tree house. As you can see, you stay above the tree line. You wake up in the morning. On one side, you have the beautiful mountains. And on the other side, you look into the ocean. So, Lise, do you have anything to say about this property? Um, I, think the, I think that picture on the left is exactly the, the lodge that I stayed in. <laughs> it's just incredible. Um, it, <clears throat> again, the food was amazing. So, uh, what, I, what stood, I mean, you can't. The, um, the quality of the accommodations are amazing, but I think, I mean, I remember our meal here. So, so in America, we, we think about crayfish and they're about this big, you know, in New Zealand, they're like this big. So we would have, this is really famous for crayfish down here in this area. And we had it for lunch and we had it for dinner. Amazing, amazing, amazing. They're bigger than lobsters. They're gigantic. They cover the whole plate. <laughs> See, I'm gonna do all about culinary. <laughs> I remember okay. every meal I had in New Zealand. It was unbelievable. Anyway, incredible Fantastic. property. Fantastic. And and um, again, if you're if you're interested in doing uh, like a luxury lodge stay, but you'd also like to have the wildlife experience uh, with the whale watching, this is a fantastic uh, option to put in there. Now we're down in Queenstown, and, and uh, this is Icart's Hotel. And uh, this is obviously the picture that uh, Lisa's also put in some of the Zoom invitations that sent out. So this hotel is the probably the most ho historic hotel in New Zealand. So Queenstown and the whole local area started as a gold mining town in about the 1850s. And this hotel started uh, just after that in the early 1860s. And you can see on the bottom right of the picture, the historic building, which you can actually still stay in. And then they've also built a new wing. Uh, and this is right downtown in the middle of Queenstown. You've got everything on your doorstep. You've got bars, restaurants, and you open up to this incredible lake and alpine view. Lise, your thoughts on this property? I, I'm telling you, this blew our mind. This was, um, uh, again, we stayed with this view. So I'm, I'm in one of the rooms that has the balcony. I don't know if you can see it in the white picture, but that's one of those rooms. Um, I didn't get to stay in the penthouse, this is the penthouse, but, um, 
but that's the view and you can't believe it. Now, if you were to look straight down, it's a wow. street and there's a whole street life going on. There are musicians, there are people gathered. Um, it's very lively. And, uh, and, uh, and there is, um, uh, sorry, there we go. There is uh, restaurants all along the side. And uh, anyway, it's a, it's a fantastic location. You can walk anywhere in Queenstown. So this this is one of those very, very special properties for sure. And you're also looking west. So you get the sun setting over the mountains in the evening. You can be outside having a drink, watching the sunset. And if you go to the end of this lake, this is Lake Wakatipu. At the end of this lake, uh, uh, there's some really cool jet boating, which I'll talk about. Uh, in, a, in a little bit, but it's also one of the locations where they filmed extensively for Lord of the Rings. So you can actually do a very cool Lord of the Rings tour, but we'll get into that in a little little bit later. Now this property, this is super cool. So this is the Lindus. Now the Lindus is set on about 5,000 acres of private property surrounded by mountains on three sides. It has won multiple uh, architectural awards around the world. This property is only three years old. There's only five luxury rooms within this. And if you can imagine, in the morning you wake up and you're looking onto this, this massive valley with nothing in there except the snow-capped mountains and opportunities to fly fish. You have this whole playground to yourself. There's no one around there at all. And, it's, and from the architectural point of view, it just completely blends into the surrounding landscape. The Lindus is probably about a two hour drive out of Queenstown. Uh, again, it's not so well known in the luxury lodge space because it is very new, uh, but again, uh, one that is highly recommended. Another one in the area is called Minaret Station. This is in Wanaka. So as I said, Wanaka is about an hour outside of Queenstown. This has four, uh, four rooms or chalets, I should say, that you could stay in. And again, this place is only accessible by helicopter. The really cool thing about this place is that it's still a working farm and it's huge. We're talking about, I think it's maybe 15 to 20,000 acres, this property. Uh, it's an alpine farm, helicopter access. You've got incredible heights there. In the evenings, you go into the lounge area and the chef um, you know, makes you beautiful meals. And during the day, you can do heli touring, you can do hiking. Uh, if anyone comes in the winter months, there's incredible heli skiing as well. Uh, it's all on your doorstep. And don't forget, we also have some super yachts here. So I live in Auckland and Auckland is actually a maritime playground. It's very similar to um, Florida in the sense that a lot of people have boats here. So in Auckland, we have probably a hundred islands that can be explored right in within the harbour region. And one of the luxury super yachts you can go on to is called Rua Moana. You can privatise it for half a day or a day, or you can do overnight cruises. The islands here are beautiful. Uh, and to give you an idea, um, from Auckland, you can go over to Waiheke Island, which is probably only about an hour's cruising at the most. And from there, you have these beautiful wineries, incredible beaches, great fishing, and you can go further afield than that. People don't really think about New Zealand as a place to get on a, uh, a, a private uh, charter or, or luxury launch. But uh, yeah, we've got some great options. And another beautiful place to, to do it is up in the Bay of Islands, which is just a short one hour flight north of Auckland or about a three hour uh, drive by car. What we're actually seeing more of now is um, US clients wanting to do a little bit of self-drive, which is kind of cool because, um, you know, the, the, the roads here in a lot of places are really empty. The only thing you need to be aware of is that we do um, drive on the left side of the road, which to us is the right side, right being the correct side of the road, not the right side because you guys drive on the right. We drive on the left and the steering wheel's on the right. But you know what you can do is that if you want to take a luxury vehicle when you're down in, in uh, let's say, Queenstown, for example, and go cruising for a day, we can definitely arrange that. Or if you want to take it for a couple of days and you could even drive between Christchurch and Queenstown, it's about six hours, but the landscape in between and places to stop off is incredible. So we can get you on a nice four-wheel drive if you want to go down into some of the mountain roads. Lots of options there. And we are seeing the American market do a little bit more of that. So it's just to let you know that that is an option as well. Now, New Zealand's also a fantastic destination for honeymoon or special wedding anniversaries. And I wanted to show you these pictures because this is the North Island. It looks like a completely different country from the images I was showing you. Look how green it is. You've got white sandy beaches, you've got beautiful ocean, uh, really green islands. On the left, this is all the Bay of Islands, by the way. 
we work with this awesome helicopter operator that actually lands you on this private little rocky outcrop where you have champagne um, and you do a nice helicopter tour and then you get dropped off at a winery for some champagne. So, so some really, really cool options. And, um, and as you can see, just stunning beaches as well. One of our newest options that we actually offer, and this is the only place that you can actually do it in New Zealand, is Tesla touring. And the cool thing about Tesla touring is that, uh, um, you know, for people that maybe own a Tesla or they want to be a little bit more environmentally conscious, and we are seeing more of that now come through, uh, you can do this. And this is in Queenstown, in and around Queenstown. And these Teslas can go anywhere. As you can see from the picture on the top left, we can take you to a really remote location, set up a cool picnic in the middle of nowhere, um, or you can be picked up and dropped off uh, to the jet boating on the right. So on the right, this is the Dart River jet boating. And this is what I was talking about from the Icarts Hotel. When you look down the lake in Queenstown, at the end of the lake, this is where you go. And this is really awesome because these are specially built jet boats that can actually go in very, very shallow water and they go right up the valley. So most boats, you know, it's inaccessible. They go super quick uh, and you get to these remote, beautiful locations just surrounded by snow-capped peaks. Uh, and I highly recommend it if you're, if you're going down to Queensland. It is really cool. I'm a keen golfer. New Zealand has some awesome golfing options here. Um, and I know that one of the um, guests that was joining has just, just finished around the golf. So you'll like, you'll like these next couple of slides I'm about to talk about. One of the newest experiences we can offer is Alpine Heli Golf. Now this is Queenstown. So on the left, just below that lake, that is where Queenstown is. And we can actually heli you up. This is the highest golf hole in New Zealand. So you can see there, um, you can actually tee off overlooking the resort town of Queenstown. You're at about 4,500 feet above sea level. It's super cool. Queenstown is just a, a center of incredible golf courses, but we have world-class golf courses in both the North Island and the South Island. So this gives you an idea of what you can do. You can play next to lakes, you can play surrounded by mountains, or you can play right next to the Pacific Ocean like you would do in California. Um, and this map shows you just where what we call the marquee golf courses are. So right from the top of the North Island, so up in the top, the very first one, I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but Kauri Cliffs, is up in the Bay of Islands, right down to Queenstown. There's also Cape Kidnappers in Napier, which is, is I'll just hover my mouth, it's just this area in here. So you could, if you're a keen golfer, you can just have one or two uh, rounds as part of your trip, or you could do more. We can also connect you with one of the local pros if you'd like to have some on-course coaching. Lots of great options and a really popular option with some of our uh, American clients that we take care of here. Don't forget about cycling. The great thing about New Zealand is that we've got some awesome cycling tracks. You can do it self-guided. You could do it with one of our expert guides. And some of the backdrops you have is, you know, uh, you've got Cobalt Blue Lakes. You've got uh, snow capped Mountains. Behind us, you're looking at Mount Cook, which is our highest mountain. It's about just under 14,000 feet high. Uh, so some fantastic destinations to go cycling through. Hiking. We are a hiking paradise in both the North Island and the South Island. The North Island is all volcanic. So what you're looking at here is the Tongariro National Park. Um, this is the one day guided hike that we can offer and you overlook these volcanic lakes. Uh, this is just near Lake Taupo. You're right in the middle of the North Island. This is a full day guided hike uh, and something that's very uh, cool if you like to get up into the mountains as I do. And then down in the South Island, you've got a lot of options there as well. As you can see, this is down in the South Island so we can do some great hikes. And then you can finish in a hot tub overlooking the mountains. Now this on the left is Fjordland Lodge. It's one of the, um, this is the southernmost luxury lodge that we work with. And so we can get you out into the mountains. You can do a hike for the day. You can come back, have some champagne in the hot tub and watch the sunset over the snow-capped peak. Doesn't really get much better than that in my opinion. Fly fishing. So New Zealand has fantastic fly fishing. It's super popular with our American clients. We can offer it in both the North Island and the South Island. So if you are interested in doing fly fishing or even trying it for the first time, please talk to us. We can definitely arrange it. We also have what we call our ANK New Zealand Insider Access. Now this is special behind the scenes access that isn't open to most people to give you a really intimate look at some of the unique uh, experiences in New Zealand. On the top left, um, this is an insider access to Te Papa, Museum. Now, this is our, probably our most famous cultural museum. It's in Wellington, which is the capital. Wellington is right at the bottom of the North Island. And you go with one of the Maori elders that takes you through a really extensive collection of uh, Maori artwork for a private viewing. We have a castle in New Zealand. The second one on the left, this is Larnet Castle. So 
Dunedin was founded by Scottish settlers. They brought two things, castles and whiskey. So if you like both of those, that's the place to check out. Now, Larnack Castle has this incredible garden, uh, one of the most famous gardens in New Zealand, and you can actually go and do a private garden tour with the host. She's in her probably late 70s now, and she's lived there for about 50 years, which is really cool. On the top right, this is our Weta workshop behind the scenes. Now, Weta, Weta workshop is where um, they produced a lot of the um, props uh, and sets for all of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings movies it, in Wellington. And you get to go and meet the designers and talk about what they're working on. It's really cool. And then bottom right, we know there's a lot of you that love to drink wine and particularly New Zealand wine. We can do a wine cave lunch just outside of Queenstown. Very, very cool. Whether it's two or whether it's a group of you know six or 10, this is right down in, um, in a cellar in the Gibson Valley in Queenstown. We have an awesome wine trail in New Zealand, and um, we uh, are pioneers of some very unique blends of wine. This shows you that uh, you're never going to be far away from a wine region in New Zealand. And, and um, like I said, New Zealand, the, the, the longest you can fly on a plane is two hours north to south. The most famous three regions for wine are down here in the Hawke's Bay. This is also where Cape Kidnappers is, a great luxury lodge. Down here in Marlborough, which is the top of the South Island, uh, which is where the Hapuku Lodge and the luxury tree houses I spoke about earlier are. And then down here in Otago, which is where Queenstown is. Um, three fantastic wine areas, all very different. We can uh, arrange winery visits. Uh, you can do obviously tastings. You can do some fantastic dinners. And you can also talk to some of the wine experts. So this is down in Queenstown. This is Brant Taylor. He's been in the region for 30 years. The interesting thing about the wine in Otago around uh, Queenstown is that it's relatively new. The area was only developed in the last 30 years. He's a pioneer. He's been there right from the start. And at the start, it was really hard work to try and find the right variety of grapes to suit the climate. Uh, but he's, he, he, he's been there from the start. Now he produces some incredible vintage Pinot Noirs. You can have a private half day with him, go behind the scenes. He tells you his story about the successes, but also the failures really interesting guy. So if you're interested in, in getting to know a local winemaker, we can arrange that. Another local legend, Henry Van Ash on the right. And on the left, this is our founder. So this is Jeffrey Kent, who started Abercrombie & Kent in the 1960s, uh, living in Kenya, did the first luxury safari. And on the right is Henry Van Ash. Now, Henry Van Ash is famous because he was the founder of the New Zealand bungee. He commercialized the bungee. So if you like to throw yourself off bridges, as some of you do, you can actually have a really interesting half day with him and he tells you his story. From the 1980s, when he jumped off the Eiffel Tower in 1985 and he was about 20 years old, he got arrested by the police, it was a publicity stunt, came back to New Zealand, said, you know what, I reckon there's a business idea in this. And now New Zealand is the place to go to throw yourself off uh, uh, bridges with a bit of elastic and he's the guy. So uh, yeah, if you're interested, you can meet him. Otherwise, I still recommend you jump off the side of a bridge. Uh, and when you jump off, you can decide whether you want to dunk your head, your body, or just touch the water. So yeah, we can customize it for you. Don't forget about the extraordinary Kiwi bird. So we're called Kiwis, you know, as New Zealanders, but it's actually based on our very famous flightless bird. They're super cute. They're very hard to see because they're nocturnal and they live in the wild. If you go to Rotorua, which is the uh, geothermal area about a couple of hours from Auckland, um, and it's also the, the best area to go if you'd like to experience some indigenous Maori culture. We have this great insider access where you get to go to the uh, breeding room of the nocturnal kiwi bird and you get to learn about how they uh, take the, the kiwi birds from, from the eggs um, and uh, they incubate the eggs and then release them into the wild. So it's really, really cool. And something completely different, but also really, really cool is our ultimate fjordland experience. So this is, again, based in Queenstown, where you get picked up by helicopter and you just do this incredible helicopter flight over the Southern Alps with alpine landings and you land on these wild and remote West Coast beaches. Now, Lise, you have done this. Would you like to just describe a little bit about your experiences here? Oh, this was one of the most exciting, uh, well, I, I gotta tell you, um, New Zealand is all about excitement. It's a lot of adventure. It's a lot of activity. You're just constantly, there's something new to do between, you know, anything. Anyway, this is one of those where we would take the helicopter over to the west side of the of the country and land on a beach. But, you know, it looked absolutely incredible. Um, it was pristine. It was completely um, nobody around. 
But then we figured out why. <laughs> because after about 10 minutes, there are hundreds of sand flies that just like come and attack you and you you just can't even understand why i mean it's and and so we land and the and the helicopter guy says okay you got about 10 minutes that's about it that's it and then and then we gotta go you know we gotta go we gotta go and sure enough we figured out why we had to go anyway then we landed on the top of one of these peaks and that was unbelievable i mean i'm i mean you just there are no words to say how incredible that was so it's all about helis in uh, in New Zealand, really. I mean, if you, yeah. And you can do it without doing a helicopter, but if you are not afraid of helicopters, this is the way to go. Okay, that's all I have to say. Yes, I, I agree. And and um, definitely recommend getting in a heli at least once in your trip to New Zealand, but you can also do this in a fixed wing plane. Um, and, and the cool thing about this part is that Queenstown, where, where you take off in Queenstown, Queenstown's actually quite dry and you literally go over the mountains and you have this lush green rainforest. So what you're looking at here is Milford Sound. Milford Sound is the wettest part of New Zealand. It has over 20 feet of rain a year. Where you take off in Queenstown has two feet of rain. So can you imagine in the helicopter tour going from a place which is very dry, which is where they make the wine, going over the mountain peaks and on the other side, it's just like, lush waterfalls and 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 a lot of rain uh yeah it's just an incredible environment so kind of similar to the big island of hawaii where on one side it's wet on the other side it's dry but even on a larger scale than that we talked about these crayfish and least talked about them so we do actually send down we can send down the divers to go and get your fresh crayfish when we did uh it was two about sorry three years ago in 2018 so jeffrey kent does his private um, around the world jet series and three years ago they called into Queenstown for three nights which he hosted uh, and we took a group of people up into the mountains we went down and got the fresh crayfish and then of course we set up some uh, Dom Perignon champagne up in the mountains there were no no one there uh, except for just uh, the private group that we had there and then we went to Fiordland Lodge which is just a little bit south of Queenstown and we set up this beautiful lunch. You can see some of the fresh seafood that you can have there. We drank great wine. Uh, just, I mean, for the, for, for the clients, they, they just loved it. It was just absolutely fantastic. And we also do have something that's very cool because this is for the American market. If you wanted to be part of a private jet uh, and didn't want to uh, you know, necessarily do private touring, we have a Wings Over New Zealand tour, which is happening at the end of next year. There's two departures, it's 11 days, um it's only got 18 guests it's already been selling very very well it starts in auckland with a couple of nights at the park higher uh then we go down to cape kidnappers which is in hawks bay that was the wine region that i was telling you about it has a fantastic golf club you have three nights down there luxury lodge on its own private farm you then go down to dunedin for a couple of nights dunedin was where the castle is uh that's a scottish heritage so a really interesting place to check out and then you finish in queenstown with three nights at the soft hotel uh so um, if you're thinking of joining a, uh, a, a group tour and you'd really like to see New Zealand from above uh, and you'd like to, to, to join a small group tour, this one is going to be really cool as well. This gives you an idea of the uh, plane that we'll be using uh, and some of the flight times. Look at the flight times there. Auckland to Hawke's Bay, an hour 15. Hawke's Bay to Dunedin, an hour 40. Dunedin to Queenstown, an hour 10. You, I mean, you're not spending much time in the air, but the, the, the contrast of locations that you're going to from getting on the plane to off the plane is just incredible. And that brings us to the end of our presentation on New Zealand. So um, I hope this has given you a nice little overview of what we can offer here and uh, some inspiration perhaps when you're, when you're planning a trip to New Zealand. And uh, I'd like to throw it back to you guys if you've got any questions or feedback or if Lise wants to say anything, um, go right ahead. So Chris, I just wanted to point out that we did a lot of self drive. So we did some flights, but we also did a lot of self drive and it was incredible. The things that we managed to do 14 days, we started at the top of, well, actually in Auckland. So it's not really the top of the North Island, but we managed to take two weeks and go all the way down to Queenstown. And that was the perfect amount of time. I mean, we were on the move, but the driving was great. I mean, it, there was no, there was no problem with, um, uh, figuring it out. I mean, I did most of the driving, but yeah, it was, it was great. It was wonderful. I mean, it's definitely Alpine, you know, roads. I, I mean, you certainly feel like you're, um, well, you're on a, on a two lane highway. So it's a little, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit. I, think, yeah, I mean, 
I, I've spent uh, a fair bit of time in the States. I used to, I spent a season up in Lake Tahoe, so I do know the States. I do know California. Um, and I do know that the States is very varied, but you, when you're driving, it takes a long time for the scenery to change. Uh, so if you can imagine you've got a whole bunch of the US and Alaska just piled into one tiny state, that's New Zealand. It literally changes every half hour to an hour. It's like there's a volcano. It's like, oh, there's a glacier. There's some rainforest. Um, yeah, so if you do want to see it uh, and do self-drive or even do part self-drive, awesome. Yeah. And it's really easy to do because you can do self-drive and then you get to a place. So we were really fortunate to stay at Cape Kidnappers. I know that Chris mentioned that a couple of times and that was just another one of those luxury lodges that blow your mind. But then we flew from Napier down to, um, where did we go? To Nelson. I, we went We went to, um, well, we stopped in, um, oh my God, my brain is, anyway, we went to Nelson. But the point is that you can fly from one place to the next and then drive for another, you know, three or four hours and then stay in a lodge or stay in a hotel, stay in something, and then drive for another three or four hours and then hop a plane and take another hour flight. So you can definitely combine the two. You don't, you know, you don't have to do all flying. And I actually really would have missed a lot if I had just flown. You know, I think, I think it's just, there's so many beautiful areas. And you didn't even talk about Hobbiton. I didn't even talk about Hobbiton, no, yeah. So, <laughs> I, so I mean, there's, look, there's lots of things I didn't talk about, but, I, but I, 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 I had to keep it to within basically half an hour. But Hobbiton's really cool because you can drive here, um, you drive there from Auckland in a couple of hours, and it's literally the Hobbiton set that they use in the movie. Um, and you can go and have lunch, you can go and have, you go and have lunch in like the Hobbit's lunch hole. It's pretty it's cool. Green dragon. It's fantastic. Yeah, and then, green dragon. Uh, that's glow it. Glow worms. The glow worms are another thing that are really cool. So I didn't get, get to talk about the glow worms either. Yeah, glow worms are amazing. So there is just it just goes on and on and on. There are and then I did zip lining. We did a toboggan run. We did and that was all in Rotorua. And um, the Maori culture is really a big part of this and and I don't even think there's enough time in a couple hours to talk about everything there is in New Zealand but the Maori culture was just that really moved me you know this is the indigenous um culture that was there before the Europeans got there and they are equally I think I was so stunned by the fact that that they share with the European uh heritage people you know really equally in um in running the governments, they have they have representatives from both. They are very very active, and sometimes street names have both the Maori and the English names. And you know, you really feel the culture probably more so than any uh, culture that I've uh, any place that I've visited. You know, I mean, while in Canada, you know, they have the First Nation, and and we have. Um, the Native Americans, but we don't feel it quite like you feel it in New Zealand. You guys have really uh, respected and promoted that culture so that it is very much a part of everything in New Zealand. I, I was really moved by that. So that's I, that, I, picture, actually. That, that, that. That is true. I think one of the advantages in New Zealand is that we're a very small progressive country. So uh, one of the things we're very proud of, we're the first country in the world to give women the vote, uh, uh, which was in the late 1890s. Um, so we're run by a, um, uh, we've got a female prime minister who's now in her second term, uh, but you feel like you're just, uh, I mean, she calls all of us a team of 5 million in terms of how we dealt with COVID. So it's a very warm environment here. Um, and, and in terms of cultural integra integration, look, nowhere's perfect, but I really think New Zealand does a good job in trying to integrate the uh, indigenous culture that was here and then the uh, the European culture that came afterwards and we're we're definitely seeing more and more of the Maori culture permeate different parts of um, society here which is which is really cool hey Lisa I did want to say we had a couple of questions which might be have been chatted through so I, I was just going to go through so one of them was from um, uh, Denise it's like when are the best months to visit so um, that's a very very good question um, I, you've got a couple of seasons, so uh, October, November is a really, really nice season, which is kind of like late spring, early summer. Um, February, March is also really nice because you've got, um, because if you come here in January, January is fine, but January is also when you have um, all of the schools on holiday. So our summer holidays here run from mid-December through to the end of January. 
So that's when you've got the universities and all of the schools on holiday. So it's quite busy. It's also quite busy with the Australian market. If you come in February, March, that's when it's um, uh, a fair bit quieter as well. So that's a very nice time of year to go. Uh, but also early summer is really, really cool. So if you were to come down and do November, for example, when you're doing your heli touring around the South Island, you've got all the snow-capped peaks because it's kind of at the end of winter, early spring. It's a nice time to go as well. I'm not saying December, January is not a great time to, to, to visit because we have, a, we, have, we have at least half the year when it's like, you know, nice and warm here. I'm just saying those are the two busiest months. Mm -hmm. Yep, high season. Um, and, then, um, and then when is whale watching season? So whale watching season is actually year round, which is really, really cool. So Kaikoura, uh, which we talked about, which is where you have hapuku, the uh, luxury uh, tree houses. Uh, but why it's so interesting is you've got, you've got these huge mountains and you've literally got a continental shelf that drops off to about 6,000 feet. So you've got this, these huge uh, whales that are always there just feeding really close to the shore. So even if you were to come in winter or spring and have the snow-capped mountains as your backdrop or summer, the chance of seeing the whale is, uh, ex you know, is really, really high. There's also seals and dolphins there too, which is cool. And you can kayak amongst them or you can swim amongst them. Um, and we, we work with a very um, nice heli operator that can take you uh, and do a heli tour over it if you'd like to do that, and it takes you to a peak depth like a champagne uh, picnic. Got lots of heli opportunities. <laughs> there, there, there's lots of heli, and um, you can also do what's called the heli hop, where you go between luxury lodges, which might be by car, a two-hour transfer, because you've got to go around a huge mountain range, but by heli, it's 10 minutes. So you can save a bit of time there if you want to too. Incredible. Um, what else do we have? Patty says, unbelievable view, property, New Zealand, such a fabulous country with wonderful scenery everywhere, so diverse. Thanks, Patty. That's a good analysis, I think. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Any other questions? I mean, I know this was a lot of information in a short amount of time, but um, it's really uh, got so much to offer. So. Anyone? No? Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, this was wonderful, Chris. Thank you so much for being here. This was really incredible. And uh, it is one of those destinations that, I, I mean, my husband who, who was not one necessarily for land programs because he comes from the cruise industry, um, loved every minute of it. And we could have probably done another two weeks easily. You know, it was just one of those things where you felt it was well paced and we we saw so much and like you said you know we went from rainforests or actually beaches with with sandy uh you know real fine sand all the way down to alpine uh, mountains and it was just uh incredible i mean incredible to do that in such a small country i mean i guess that's what happens when you're when you're like this, <laughs> you know, from the southern hemisphere that, you know, you literally are perpendicular practically. So it was incredible. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate that. That's okay. I, we should probably mention that one thing. It's like, when can we let you in? Yes. Okay. Uh, a <laughs> when we have to, right. Okay. So I'll just give you an update on where we're at with the vaccination rollout here. So we're, so we've only just received the Pfizer vaccine um, and it's only going to the very uh, eldest uh, elderly part of the population. But the timeline is that um, by the end of the year that we will have the majority of the, of the population vaccinated, the general population. And so we're, if, if you are genuinely interested in coming to New Zealand for the upcoming summer, um, we're recommending, you know, Q1 and onwards, okay? So January, February, March, uh, at this point in time. I feel that November, December is, is a bit too soon, to be honest, because we have to um, get quite a bit of the population vaccinated and um, we need to, uh, um, you know, enough time to do it. And isn't there something to be said for the fact that you guys have no cases? No, and you're nothing. Running around it's... right now as free people with no masks or anything because there are no cases. Nothing. No. <laughs> and we just opened with Australia with the first travel bubble operating quarantine free where there's the only time you need to wear a mask is when you get on a plane. That's it. So we're basically, so the rest of the world is looking at us because we've actually been able to, we've had our advantages, we're an island nation and we, and it came to us a little bit later. So we, we have been able to keep it out. We have this travel bubble going um, and it's exciting. It's progress, right? Like we, we all need progress with this and we're finally making some progress here. So um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a good first step.
Uh, Jen has a question. So I, um, we can ask you specifically, but I can also say that anything under two weeks will do it a disservice. But anyway, how long would you recommend for? I would recommend a minimum of two weeks. And if you can allow three weeks, that would be even better. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, but a minimum, yeah, a minimum of, of two weeks. What we see here, and it's such a shame, is that American clients come down here and they want to do New Zealand and Australia in one trip and they have two to three weeks and they come here for like five or six days. And I'm like, really? Those are two different destinations. It's like trying to do France and Spain in the same trip or something. Do you know what I mean? They're like, you need to just focus on the one destination and do it well. Yeah, or maybe Europe and Africa, really. I mean, that's- or Maybe really even Europe and Africa, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. Uh, um, I, and I do want to say that, you know, it, there really is something for every budget because even in, um, even in, in New Zealand, if you really wanted to backpack this, that's easy to do. If you wanted to rent a camper, you can do that. If you wanted to do these great walks, which is incredible, they have how many of five, six, how many great walks? No, 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 14. 14. Oh my gosh. So you can literally walk from one end of the country down to the other end of the country, but they have these little huts that you can stay in. Uh, you can book them ahead of time. And I mean, there really is a way to see this country, no matter what your budget is. And that's the, that's the beauty of it. You know, you can do these high end luxury lodges, which let me tell you are amazing. But, you know, as, as Chris said, I, and I've when I when I sell an itinerary, I really try to encourage somebody to do one, you know, if you if you can possibly just to experience it. But really, one is something special. And um, it's a it's a it's a it's really something to do. But but if you want to walk it, you can walk it. Right. <laughs> it's, it. Yeah, that's the thing. The thing about New Zealand is it's totally up to your imagination. Pretty much every single interest whether you want to be active, culinary, you want to get into arts and indigenous culture, it's all here. So it's literally just, you know, tell us what you like, tell Lise what you like, and we can we can create a beautiful itinerary for you uh, at, at, at a range of budget points as well. So, you know, we can mix and match. We can put some nice, quaint, even three or four star properties in there if that's what you like, or we can go up to five star. It's all here for you. Yeah, it really is. It's an incredible destination. So I encourage anybody to think about it. You know, um, it's, it, I will be back <laughs> as my husband. Loves right. To we're, 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 we're waiting for you. We're waiting for all of you guys that are on this call. Yeah, absolutely. Thank anybody, any other questions? Um, anybody? Okay. No, I think most stuff's been uh, covered. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris, for taking your time today. I really appreciate it. Okay. You. It's evening for us, and um, we'll be dreaming about New Zealand. And I want to thank you all for coming. It's always wonderful to have you all, and uh, I hope we'll keep doing this. I think the next destination we're going to do is actually European river cruising, so that'll be next month. So I'll let you all know what that is. But thank you so much again, Chris, and um, see you later, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye.